So we have a Laplander saw, a knife, whittling knife. If you really want to push the boat out, you can go get yourself a lovely crook knife. Some form of sharpening system, a file, razor paste. Let's get started. Okay, so why learn to carve a spoon? It's the stillness and the headspace and the time that your brain needs to get itself back on track from the crazy world that we're living in right now. It's nourishing the soul, okay? It's a bit of self-care and I wanna hear about that process in the comments box. Let me know how it made you feel. Step one, gotta go find some wood. Today, I'm going to be using willow. Willow is one of the most easily replaceable, sustainable, certainly in my little woodland that I have here of the woods. So here's a lovely piece of willow growing across here and you can kind of see that growth and it grows these nice whippy bendy rods. So what I'm looking for is a piece of willow that's relatively not free, nice and straight. And you're only gonna need a small section of about probably just the length of your forearm from the base of your hand down to your elbow. So this growth here that's coming up, it's coming up through underneath the existing canopy. This might be all right actually. So what I'd probably do is get my Laplander saw out. Okay, I'm gonna do that till it starts to pinch, which it is, and you can see the moisture inside this because we're green woodworking now. You should hear that step. Okay. The one I'm kind of looking for is a nice straight section. Just about as thick as my wrist, just about. Okay, and I'm looking for something like from here to about here, which is pretty much that unit of measure I spoke about from my watch to my elbow. Let's get these branches out the way. That's a good straight piece. I think that's gonna make a, a great spoon. Now, one of the things you're gonna to have to think about and try and have a look at this piece of wood and you'll see that to a degree it might, it might bow or it might be bent in some places. And that's because all trees and plants are following the sun as they move through the sky. Okay, it's that big word again, heliotropism. <laughs> so hopefully you can see this on the camera. I think that there is a banana, okay, a seesaw happening here. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a nice cup of fresh mint tea. First job is to go ahead and split this right through the middle. Okay, I mean, it's because it's this is green, you can see this stuff coming off really, really easily. I mean, I'm, I'm literally peeling this with my hand. And in fact, being able to take this bark off in a sheet can be quite useful because I can score this and I can fold it and I can make bark containers and things like that. But just to give an example, if you cut this stuff into sheets, strips, you could go ahead and make something like this, which is a, um, a sheath for a Laplander saw. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and split this down. And to do that, you're going to lay your knife over the top. You need to lay it so that it's running through the pith. Okay, I can see that, that gentle angle. And I want to try and split this so that I, I promote that, that angle as best possible. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this over the top here, looking down and over the pith and then just go ahead and take an off cut and use that to make your improvised hammer, okay? Just give it a few taps on the spine. Should split fairly nicely. You can see that split happening now. Okay, if we let go of that, you can kind of see what I've got here. If I twist the knife, you'll see that come open. This brown color that's running down through the inside here is the pith and that's what we need to remove. So looking at both of these, what I'm looking for is also to see whether there is any curvature this way as well as curvature this way. And I would say that there is a very gentle curvature going that way as well as a bit of curvature going this way. I'm just measuring the distance from here to here. And I'm measuring distance from here to here. Do I need to be able to scoop out and make enough bowl to actually do the job that it's intended to do? We'll put that to one side because we're not going to use this today. Okay, we've chosen to go with this one. The next stage is to remove the pith because the pith is in fact a weak point. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either use your knife, okay, in the standard push grip and you're going to just 
drive your knife along there and you can see already the knife is starting to pick up any points where it's high. Okay, and you can go ahead and start to chamfer off these pieces and the knife is gonna just naturally find those high points. If you're feeling brave, you could jump straight into it with an ax. So for a start, holding the ax, if you're right-handed, okay, the most amount of pressure is going to be between your, your index finger and your thumb up around the neck. Now the fact that this is a Swedish carving axe, see our video about axes, it talks you through some of the different design features and purposes, means that it's got this over accentuated part here and a beard, it's a bearded axe, which means I can get right up underneath here and do finer work with it. So that's, that's where things are gonna be tightest and then slowly my hand is laxing off. Okay, and I'm gonna get this lovely motion in my hand here and you can see it's just rocking forwards and backwards, okay guys? Because if you try and grip this really tightly and do lots of small jerky motions, you're just gonna burn out those motor muscles in your shoulder really fast. And I'm gonna use the front of the ax to do very small, with that motion I was on about, uh, up and down motion. All that's happening here is that the piece of work is getting maneuvered around, okay? And the ax is simply going up and down. Lots of little cuts, okay? With the piece of work being lent out and then I straighten the piece of work up and I'm able to drive them off. And I just wanna go just below the pith, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing, but slightly further up. Now, of course, as, as everything, there's a trade-off here. And the trade-off is you don't really wanna be using an ax anywhere above halfway. You're then just gonna turn it around the other way up and work from that side. Now, once you've done that, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking along here to see if there are any bumps or lumps. And I'm looking down in this plane to see whether there are any kind of high points or bits that I need to remove as well. And once I've made myself a nice flat surface, it's over to the pencil to start designing our spoon. So now comes some more decisions and I'm just looking at the curvature here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and make this end this end is going to be my bowl. Now what I'm going to do is rather than mark the top of my spoon up here, because by the time I've carved all this back off, okay, I'll have lost the edge of my spoon. I need to come down to somewhere like, much more realistic, somewhere like this, something like this. Okay, I'm going to advocate that you go ahead and put a cross in there. So you've got a cross hair, that's the middle of your bowl. Okay, now you need to kind of work out a handle. There are so many different designs at this point that we could go down. It's probably worth bringing in a few to take a look at. Here's a couple of really basic designs I'm gonna talk you through. So starting with the super thin and skinny, pretty much a coffee stirrer. Okay, nothing more exciting about that. These are kind of pocket spoons. You can make yourself just a, a good old fashioned stirrer and your very first spoon is gonna look something like a bit of a, a three little bears, Billy basic love spoon type thing. Great big chunky, fundamental, if I hold this up, you'd say, ah, a spoon. So as it happens today, I've got quite some, a nice big piece to play with. Let's keep this real simple. So I'm just gonna go and set the depth with my finger and just run, run that down there like that. Same thing again, gonna run that down just like that. Now, what happens at the bottom is totally subjective. That's, that's what you're gonna do to start with. Remember, you can work this again and again and reshape it and it's gonna change in many different planes as, as this kind of goes forward. I could go ahead and use my little Laplander saw, but if I'm back at main camp, I might have the luxury of something like this, which is a buck saw. It's a folding buck saw and is the precursor for the bow saw. Don't lose your pencil. Clamp that down tight. It's so much easier. Okay, now to remove this material here, you've got two choices. Okay, so I can either put in a series of stop cuts, and all I'm doing is marking on some pencil lines here, and I'm gonna do a series of little stop cuts here, and then I'm just gonna batten down through here, and they're gonna come away quite nicely. Okay, or the other option is I use an ax. So I'll show you one side with a stop cut method, and one side with the ax. Top tip, sometimes it's a good idea to use the other half as it's very small and very light as a hammer. 
is you want to be really delicate with this process. Okay, now be really careful with this bottom one because what could happen is if you hit this too hard you could pick up the grain here and cause a split which could run all the way through your bowl. So that's one method of accurately bringing this in and then what you do from there is you go ahead and start to carve and get rid of these tool marks. Okay, so that's, that's one method. The other method I'll show you here uses an axe. So again with the axe in that kind of lovely free flowing motion all you're going to do is you can see how quickly I've brought this in. Being able to put my hand up underneath here, I can of course carve quite accurately as well. I could do the same on this side. So that's quite quickly reduced down the size of my handle. I've kept these parts because there is a specific technique I want to show you in just a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and start to mark off the bowl here. And I'm going to place the belly of the blade, which is the first inch coming out the handle, and my thumb on the hand that's holding on here is going to come up to here like this. I'm just going to, the hand that's holding the knife is just going to place the belly on here and I'm just going to go ahead and push, push off the corner. That's all I'm doing, push, and I'm just pushing off edges. And that's basically how this starts. And now I'll come back. I'm going to have to do it anyway because I've got a split here. I'm going to take that off the whole way around. I've got this angle here and I've also created another ridge here. So I'm going to go back again, back to here, and take this one off. Okay, and now I'm going to jump forward and take this one off. Just be slow and methodical. And you can see, guys, what's starting to happen is that if I look on the side profile, you'll see the spoon is starting to round itself off. So I'm just going to start removing a bit more this time, slightly more aggressive. I'm going to come right up to this edge again. And before you know it, I've almost, I've almost got rid of that flat face. That's very, very roughly the start. And the more accurate you can be with your strokes, the more consistent you can be, the better the result. Whatever you do to one side, you wanna to do to the other. What I've now got is the beginnings of a spoon that's come in here. Uh, and, and I'm gonna to have to go ahead and bring, bring this curvature in. But how do I get from here to here? So I'm gonna to want to have to draw some kind of a, you know, I'm freehanding here, a bit of curvature, bringing that in. Whatever I've done one side, I want to be able to try and replicate the other. Okay, and think about it in every plane. Like I said before, guys, you're looking at it down this way, you're looking at it from this way, you're looking at it from this way. Starting to see something emerging here. To get into this curvature, I'm going to have to reverse my grip with the knife. I'm going to have to go and do something slightly more advanced. When we kind of look at this now, the way I'm holding the knife, okay, as a standard grip, I can put my thumb here, turn this in towards myself, okay, put this into my sternum, it's a sternum cut, okay, and I can begin to come back down towards myself. Now, this may look terrifying to start with to you at home, oh my God, he's bringing the knife back towards himself. I can assure you with my wrist crooked, Okay, in this position here, there is no way I'm going to stab myself in a month of Sundays. And what we're interested in is this curvature up here. Because it's this curvature now, which is going to allow me, as I bring the knife down, to create these fine strokes. And all I do is I turn that back over and I come back at it from the other side. So it might be a good idea at this point to grab your pencil and think about where this neck kind of starts if you just draw a line from that corner there to where that one comes in there if you look at what i've done here on this one you kind of got your bowl here and then it kind of comes up at this stage you're pretty much at what we call a blank you're going to need to think about what this handle might want to look like if you've got a, a quite a blocky handle and you want to start to just shape your handle and round your handle off a little bit more you can go ahead and do so because it's a nice soft wood that we're learning with slowly turning in the hand and pushing away with a good clean sharp knife okay in the hand something functional something that I can I definitely already it's starting to look like a spoon so let's move on to making a bowl we could swap over to a really good sharp little whittling knife and we can bring to pick up our crook knife I've got the champagne cork here as a top tip it makes a really good little safety bung on the end when it comes to me wanting to remove this stuff on the inside some basic rules and principles to follow are the grain running through the wood everything is going in nice straight lines what i do want to be doing 
okay, is coming across the grain. I can lay this in the hand. If I'm looking for an angle which gives me that scooping motion. I'm going to sit this down here and all I'm going to do is just pick up a little edge and just begin to scoop very small amounts. There's little pieces coming out already. Now, all I'm going to do is turn this around. And again, all I'm doing is very gently skipping across the front of the bowl. That's, take your time. And it's this ridge in the middle that catches a lot of people out. Go back to your start position, okay? Do the same again. Be patient, but focus on trying to remove that ridge in the middle. If you didn't have access to a crook knife and you wanted to kind of be very kind of primitive or use a primitive method, okay, there is another technique here. You could go ahead and grab a small ember out of the fire, break off that ember into the bottom of your bowl, holding that ember down in the bottom of the bowl. And what you will do is literally start to burn and blow that ember all the way around and burn a bowl into the bottom, known as a burn bowl technique, okay? You get a stone or a piece of flint and you'd scrape out the inside. So that's pretty much as far as I'm gonna go with the, uh, with the bowl. Next thing I'm gonna do now is start to, uh, to take in some of these dimensions and it's just about pushing off little bits at a time being nice and even with this as I come round. So I'm just being really gentle, using that thumb to assist the whole way round. Okay, and our simple little willow spoon now is starting to take shape. See what I'm doing now is kind of a scissoring motion. I'm just rocking the back of the knife on the spoon. It allows me to be very accurate and take off thousands at a time. So there's repeated very small motions with a really sharp knife. It doesn't leave any jagged uh, edges. You're just looking for that evenness the whole way around here. Okay, you might find yourself in a situation where you feel like you're just constantly chasing your tail with this. Having a good sharp tool will get you close to your final finish, but it might not necessarily get you exactly where you want to be. Okay, so I've created that collar again. I'm going to come back and I'm going to chase that collar in some more. The key is to just be really light and delicate. Okay, so now we've got there is take these sharp edges off very gently. Just chamfer those in. One of the ways you can go ahead and finish this spoon, okay, is to use this, sandpaper. Okay, so you're gonna take your paper, okay, I would fold it in half. You're only gonna want like that half. And then all you're gonna do to start with is just put it in your hand, okay. Okay, and that's gonna start to just take off any rough edges or tool marks. Just literally work, work around the, you know, the top of your thumb in very small directional movements, forwards and backwards. Get rid of all these tool marks on the bowl. Okay, on this side of the bowl, it's nice and smooth, and on that side, you've still got all the tool marks. So you want to go ahead and take all of these off the whole way around. If you're, uh, if you're kind of not interested in the sanding and you want to be a bit more traditional, just find yourself a nice smooth little pebble. Okay, this takes a bit more time, and you're going to go ahead and drive the pebble and work the pebble into the bottom of the bowl. You are quite literally pushing the wood fibers flat against each other, creating a better seal. And then I'd go ahead and finish it with some oil. Now the type of oil I'd go and use, okay guys, I'd either use a nut oil, like a hazelnut oil, or like a mineral oil. One side of this here is still really rough and the other side is shiny now. See that shine? Okay, and that's where I've literally used this, the pebble to drive in and push the wood fibers flat. And then what you can do is go ahead and give it some oil. So guys, when it comes to oiling stuff and looking after uh, craft materials and items, um, as a little rule, here's something for you to try and remember. Oil me once a day for a week. Oil me once a week for a month. Oil me once a month for a year. Oil me once a year. And that is how you finish your spoon.